Hi, welcome to Viewpoint. I'm Lil Newman. Viewpoint's mission is to do four things. To bring guests to our show that has information for people who have issues and concerns in their families and in the communities. To bring you guests that are on the front lines. To bring you resources to help you with your issues and problems. And also to be, um, to help you so your burden isn't as heavy and you're not alone. And with me is my co-host, Susan Salomon, Executive Director of Drug Crisis in Our Backyard. Hi, Lily, so great to see you again. Thank you, I'm glad you're here, Susan. And our guests today are Arlene Sanchez Gonzalez, Commissioner of New York State, uh, New York State Office of Alcoholism and Substance Abuse Services, and Mr. Robert Kent, Chief Counsel of New York State Office of Alcoholism and Substance Abuse Services. That was a mouthful. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Really appreciate you being here with us today. Thank, Thank you. you Thank for inviting you. us. Thanks Thank for you. coming. Thanks for taking that long ride long down drive from down. Albany. <laughs> well, I took one down. Commissioner yes. drove up. Hers yes. was harder than mine. Oh, okay. But it was, it was great. <laughs> Thank well, you. well, it's a beautiful day for a drive. Absolutely. And uh, just to mention that all those long words that you said, Lily, stands for New York State. It stands for Oasis. Oasis. So, um, because people hear the name Oasis and they don't even know really what it stands for. Right. And w when we had you to our town in February, when I put out on Facebook that Oasis were coming, people were saying, who's that? Right. <laughs> Right. What is it? <laughs> so we thought it would be a great idea to have you on the show so that you could explain who Oasis is and what your job what, as what an agency do. is. Great. So I guess I'll start. Yes. Um, and so like you indicated, it is the New York State Office of Alcoholism and Substance Abuse Services. We're the single state authority for addiction services mm -hmm. in New York State. Um, with that, we oversee and we're responsible for delivering addiction services in all of New York State. We monitor, we identify gaps, we certify programs, and we fund programs. Um, we oversee one of the largest um, prevention, recovery, and treatment services in the nation wow. um, with over 1,500 providers wow. and serving approximately or over a hundred thousand individuals on a regular basis um, which is not something I sit here proud of I mm -hmm. wish I could say we only mm -hmm. serve right. 10 people right. mm -hmm. but unfortunately right. that's the reality mm -hmm. so that in essence is Oasis um, I sit on the cabinet of the governor um, and Rob I don't know if I left anything else out <laughs> that you wanted to add in terms of what Oasis is but we're on the forefront and we manage and we um, coordinate the services for addiction in the state. Yeah we're a full service agency so as the commissioner and indicated we also run 12 mm -hmm. programs ourselves statewide and they're 24 7 medically staffed programs um, and then in addition to that, as the commissioner talked about, we, it's a very large, sophisticated system. Um, we think it might be the largest, others quibble with us on that, but, uh, and then the commissioner spoke, we, we fund a significant number of our providers, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we fund them to treat people who, well, in a perfect world it would be to fund for people who don't have insurance, right aren't Medicaid eligible, you know, the uninsured. Mm -hmm. um, we've tended, the reality is, to fund programs cost that includes, and we'll probably get into it as we move forward, sort of subsidizing the care of people with insurance because mm -hmm. of the obstacles that insurance mm -hmm, companies mm -hmm. have put up over the years. So when you say that, when you say you subsidize them, the uh, does that mean, I'm going to kind of give you an example of what, um, like, in, in, in relation to education. <clears throat> like, in education, uh, New York State subsidizes public schools with money mm -hmm. for, to help support the school, depending on the air demographic of the school. They get more money depending on where the demographic is. Is, is that how you do it, or do you subsidize individuals in treatment? 
No, I, what we actually do is we subsidize, um, we do some net deficit funding mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for our contract providers. Um, all of our providers have sliding scale mm -hmm, fees mm -hmm. for those that are working that or working poor that mm -hmm. don't have insurance. Um, but there are some providers that even with the sliding scale and Medicaid and insurance, just don't don't are not able to provide the service and be able to pay the staff. Mm -hmm. So the department then funds what we call net deficit. We don't do it for the individual, but we do it in general for the, for the service. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, effectively, we'll agree on a budget with a provider mm -hmm. that we're going to fund, and we can only fund not-for-profits in New York mm -hmm. State. Right. I'm the lawyer. The law prohibits right. us from funding for-profits, but effectively, we'll agree on a budget with a provider, and then we will subtract out from their budget the revenue they produce from insurance, from Medicaid, other sources, and then there's it leaves a deficit, and that deficit we fund that net deficit. Because if you didn't, we'd probably lose more programs. Uh, they're, they're they be gone. would not be they treated. Would, right. Yeah, yeah. There wouldn't be. They'd be gone. The, the other yeah. thing, though, right. it, that you have to keep in mind, especially with all that we've been working on. When I when I said subsidizing, what I really meant is there are a lot of people with insurance in New York State who've been unable for a lot of reasons to access those benefits mm -hmm. but we fund remember we fund these programs we're funding their deficits so some of the people they're treating have insurance weren't able to access the benefits we still tell our programs to bring people in and treat them because one of the other obligations so if we fund you in law mm -hmm. it says you must accept anybody regardless of their ability mm -hmm. to pay mm -hmm. But what's ended up happening is we funded people where there was an ability to pay by a contract with an insurance company that they had, and that wasn't an obligation that was being met, but we still um, funded those programs and maintained, as the commissioner said, treating almost 100,000 people on any given day. Mm. So. Okay, that's pretty interesting. So, and when you say you have state, um, you have uh, treatment centers yourself. Always. Yes, we have 12 treatment centers throughout the state. Um, um, as um, Rob indicated, um, we run them ourselves. They're our staff. Um, and usually they're the, the places where people go, of last resort, right. where when hospitals don't admit individuals because they've either been there too many mm -hmm. times or mm -hmm. they don't mm -hmm. have the ability right. to pay, they don't have the insurance. We we take care of that. So that would be Blaze. Is that Blaisdale? Blaisdale on Creek Moore, C.K. Ward. C.K. Okay. Yeah, R.C. Ward. Ward. Got it. They're okay. all throughout the state. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then in addition to that, we also have field office mm -hmm. um, in various parts of the state as well um, that are, you know, our eyes and ears on the ground. Um, they work with providers in the community they monitor them. When I say monitor, it's not, it's not a punitive right. word. Um, my idea is to work with providers in the community and people receiving services so that we could better organize ourselves right. and be able to better serve the community. Identify where the needs are, where mm -hmm. the gaps are. We have staff that just you know, does that throughout the regions. Um, that work for Oasis. Um, it's very important for us to be very patient-centered and family-focused. That's how we run Oasis. That's the mission and that's the vision of Oasis. Um, so we have staff throughout the states, different offices mm -hmm. that, that report to us, that work with us on that as well. How many field offices do you have? We have Seven. seven. Seven, okay. Seven. So their job is to be in a community and say, well, maybe there's not enough family programs so or a certain type of program. So they're, they're the liaisons. Right. They're, the, they're the boots on the ground. If, if there's an individual with a problem mm -hmm. or a need, if there's a family member who says, 
you know, my loved one needs help. I went to provider X. Provider X did not, was not helpful. Mm -hmm. Those are the calls we get. Got it. And that's where our staff intervene. Got it. Because as Rob was indicating earlier, you know, we fund for profit and non for profits. Non -for -profit. We don't fund for mm -hmm. profits. Right. Okay. The understanding is that you need to serve people right. regardless of their ability to pay. Right. That's part of the reason why right. we do net deficit. Right. Everybody doesn't abide by the right. rules and regulations. It's not a perfect world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, for the most part, we have good providers mm -hmm. that do, but there's always a handful that right. don't. Mm -hmm. And in those instances, that's where we ask that our staff, that's why we have field right. office staff, so that they could intervene before it becomes a big issue. It doesn't seem like enough seven field offices or there it's a pretty big state it is it is um and and we do have a lot of contracts and like i indicated i i think we may be the largest addiction prevention and treatment system in the nation but i'm trying not to say that right. um, <laughs> but i think we're very close to it it but, sounds like but, you know we have we have very good folks working with us that really go beyond mm -hmm. you know just the 20 you know the eight hours a day um, and and we have been able to really work through the system even though it is it's not easy but we have been able to do it so. yeah so how many employees are um, employed by Oasis we have approximately 741 employees 741 really that's not that many really doesn't no. sound when, that when like, you like that it's a what lot you, what you're doing you really. it's do. not and if you consider where we were five or six years ago it's not right. but that has made us be more efficient yeah. and more effective mm -hmm. you know i don't look at it as as a negative mm -hmm. i look at it as us saying we really have to now refocus how mm -hmm. we do our work be more efficient and more effective and really focus in on what really right. makes a difference and what we really need to right. know. Um, and and it's, I'm not gonna sit here and say it's easy, um, but I think mm -hmm. we have gotten to the point where we're really revamping mm -hmm. how we do work. Yeah. We're revamping our whole system to be able to deliver dignified quality care to the people we serve knowing that we don't have, like other entities, right. you know, so many staff, and um, and I'm hopeful that that we're we're seeing a lot of good improvements. We have great staff, and I, you know, I'll say that one of the things about our staff, there's a lot of people in our agency that are either in recovery mm -hmm. themselves or have family right. members who are in recovery. They're committed to right. the mission right. of our agency. And the other thing I'd say is our providers, 99.9% .9 of them are doing this for all the right reasons. Right. You are not exactly. you are well, not going to make a fortune I second running that. drug and alcohol. Uh, I program. second that. So there's some commitment there to helping people. Yes. And most of them do it the right way. Yes, and I agree. Occasionally there are slip-ups. Yeah. Our staff is there. We, we don't. Yeah, the commissioner talked about not being punitive. It's not in our interest mm -hmm. to shut providers right. down right. unless they have no intention of right. doing anything other than the wrong thing. Right. And it takes time to get there. So we usually work with providers to help them correct issues. Um, and we have staff that go all over the state that do that. But we don't. Yeah. Our providers do a really good job. Yeah, uh, I think that's a great point you raised, Rob. I think you're absolutely right. That's the uniqueness of mm -hmm. Oasis. Um, we really have dedicated staff to the mission. I mean, really wholeheartedly, mm -hmm. and, and they're there because of that. Right. Um, and it shows. It shows in how we're able to work in the communities with providers. So I, you know, we've been blessed that we have, and, and that's the uniqueness of Oasis. We're small, but if you look at the outcomes and you see what we've been able mm -hmm. to do, when you compare it with other entities that are much larger, mm -hmm. 
um, you, you say it as, how do you do it? And, and that's how you right. do it. You have We're the, the right. the little engine that could. That could, yeah. right. That's I think you just I keep know going. I a lot more employees than that. But yeah. So I have another question that just came to mind because I know that OMH is a whole nother agency. Is that yes. right? Mm -hmm. So how many employees do they have? Oh, in the thousands. Any idea? You know, <laughs> like roundabout. Um, I couldn't even venture. You couldn't even venture. The but thousands, they run like. Yeah more than double the number of facilities. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, it's a much larger agency. And isn't yeah. there some talk about joining something, both agencies or something? There, there's conversation mm -hmm. that goes on. I, it hasn't happened. Right. I can tell you there was a conversation a couple years ago and basic, it, we went around the state mm -hmm. and talked to stakeholders and mm -hmm. the outcome of that was it might make sense at some point, mm -hmm. but now's not the time. Got it. With all the stuff that's going on, and this is even pre the real focus on the heroin right, opioid right. epidemic, mm -hmm. so it makes that probably even less of the right, right time. Let yeah, us, right. let us exactly. focus right. on getting on top of this mm -hmm, epidemic. Mm -hmm. And I will say one thing though, and I'll say it so that the commissioner doesn't have to say <laughs> it. That's my job, I'm her counsel, I'm her lawyer. <laughs> There are a lot of people who have both, mm -hmm. mental right. health and addiction. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people who don't. Right. And the approach of treating somebody um, who has an addiction issue versus somebody who has a mental health issue, they're different. They aren't the same. Right. There are similarities. There are people who you do have to focus on the fact they have both. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of people who don't. And so um, it, it's a conversation that I'm sure will continue over the years and maybe it's at some point that I think the, the biggest thing that came out in those meetings mm -hmm. that we did around the state is if programs consolidate on the ground then it probably won't matter who runs right. the agency right. in Albany right but we're not there yet yeah and and I think the idea around the integration is to better serve the individuals right. that are duly diagnosed. That's right. yes. yeah. And so, um, like Rob indicated, there's a lot of stuff that we have to get done on the ground mm -hmm. before we start looking at integrating whole departments. Right. Um, for example, we have to ensure that we have the staff that's appropriate, that's well versed in both areas. Um, it's not like Rob indicated, it's not true that if you're an OMH, right. you know, uh, social worker, that you're going to be able to treat someone with an addiction. addiction problem. Mm. Yeah, we would, we would I'm just talking talk about, about that yeah. <laughs> uh, because it's very, it's very different. The, the, and, I and have the protocols, some even the protocols <laughs> that. for the integrated piece right. is different from yeah. the OMH and the Oasis. And I speak to it, you know, being a person that has gone through two integrations, mm -hmm. one in New York City and one in Nassau County, and you can't do it overnight. Got if it. you want to do it right, you can't do it over right, overnight. And with this epidemic that we mm -hmm. have right now, with all the changes that we're doing in our own system mm -hmm. to ensure that the appropriate level of care is being delivered, I agree with Rob, we need to stabilize that piece right. before we start moving forward. And we need to really focus on, you know, the workforce. Do we have the appropriate workforce with the appropriate background to overnight work under an integration right. system? Yeah. And, and so, but having said that, we're also working on yeah doing some integration we're in areas that make sense for example dual licensures right. that a lot of our providers complain that you know oh i have a license from oasis i right. have a license from omh and from doh and i get audited three times i get too much paperwork and that makes sense mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. we're working on integrating those licensures and maybe in that way also right. um getting people to start getting used to doing right. things more comprehensively. Right, right. Mm -hmm. instead of separating it. Get, yeah. If you have mental health issues, you go in, but you've got drug issues, got to have to get rid of this, stop using the drugs, and then we'll work on the mental health. Right. 
And and yeah, yeah. And 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 if someone comes in through that door, that individual should get whatever the individual right, needs. needs. What right. what is the like protocol for that now? I know it's changed. When my son was he was in um, Columbia Presbyterian Hospital for a research study for naltrexone before it was approved for opiate addiction. And um, they would not talk about his, uh, any ADD. He had ADD. They wouldn't talk about it. They, would only, they were only addressing the substance use. It was a great program. I have no, yeah. absolutely no negative things to say about it. The counselor there was excellent. But I'm wondering what the protocol is that it, now. That was back in 2008. Okay, so they, they wouldn't even talk about um, any docu documented ADHD, anxiety, mm -hmm. anything like that. They were just treating the substance abuse and then they were going to address the, they weren't even gonna address the mental illness. That would have had to be a different person. Right. That's interesting, because yeah. our system <laughs> treats a lot of mental illness. I can yes. tell you, one of the things right now, people mm -hmm. who would come in with addiction they have a primary diagnosis, mm -hmm. or they have a diagnosis that allows them to be an Oasis program. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of anxiety. There's mm -hmm. other, you know, right. mental health issues, and they treat them now. I can tell you one of the things we're working on. The commissioner talked about the licensure. Um, we've written a regulation with OMH and the Department of Health. You can have an integrated clinic so it's ambulatory it's outpatient kind mm. of services you can apply to be an integrated, integrated outpatient program and do all the services the important the piece oh. is to get paid mm -hmm. for oh. doing all those services which okay. we've worked out okay. so you can get paid and, you could. and right. the next step we have to take is take it beyond just because there you have to have an oasis mm -hmm. omh and or DOH, you have to have all the licenses. We've got to get to the point where, uh, with an OASIS license mm -hmm. or an OMH license, you could, do it all. you could do all these things and get reimbursed for them. Right, and we're, right, if you wanted to do it. In right. other words, the way we did it now was, in order for you to be considered mm -hmm. for this integrated license, you would have already had to have the individual license. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. What we want to be able to do now moving forward is that if you're an OASIS only um, provider and you would want to do a comprehensive mm -hmm. treatment, you want to treat OMH clients and maybe a primary health right. outpatient, yeah. you should be able, that's to, right. be able to do that. Right. So that's, Absolutely. That's, Good. That's moving forward. Good. Yeah, so to, to treat uh, people more holistically. That's right. Yes. That's very the whole person. The, uh, Addiction, there's uh, health problems right. as well. Right. Well, Absolutely. And it, I mean, I'll tell you, All one of the time. things that yep. we see, so our system's voluntary, mm -hmm. with very few exceptions. Mm -hmm. So people come there by choice. And if they're there by choice, why wouldn't you look to address all their That's other right. issues? Because they trust you. That's right. So there's a trust That's relationship. Right. So why not, if they're diabetic, have people capable of managing their diabetes, right. managing if they have an anxiety disorder? Right. You know, it, it, you got to be careful when it gets too serious mm -hmm. of a mental illness. Right. 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 But there's right. a lot of mental illnesses that aren't the access That's one right. or the high level right. that people function with. That you know that we're hoping our programs. A lot of them already do this. As I was saying, a lot of them when you talk to them. We do this. We just don't get reimbursed, but we do it because those are who our clients right, are. Right, right, yeah. right. And, and it actually will help us in terms of um, working holistically with the, mm -hmm. with the individual and really will maybe limit the ability of individuals going from one doctor to another, not, you know, telling yeah. the the physician what they really are on that may cause other secondary unintentional consequences. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's it's really important. This whole holistic piece That's is right. really important for the individual that we're serving to really serve them the way they need to be served. So yeah, I agree. I think that um, we're missing. Many, too, yeah, too many people the fall through the cracks. cracks. That's like, right. You know, like, I know. I know that. I hear this from parents too, but I know even with myself, 
if like when he got out of that uh, Columbia Presbyterian Hospital, we were like free floating. Now what do right. we do now? Now what do you yeah. do? You know, right. and that that is that is more the case than not. Right. And mm -hmm. so if you if you have either warm transfers to the next, that's or, right, the next level of care. Where where are we going to bring them now, right. so that all the records can go that's with right. them, and this uh, next place knows exactly what has been done with that's them. Right. Who he is? That's you right. Know, that's really that's so right. important because. Or else they they take that opportunity. I hate to say it, right. but they're yeah. you know they're sick. They take the mm -hmm. opportunity mm -hmm. to to slip away. Right. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Right. yeah, care coordination is big. Key. Yes. Key. Absolutely. So, Rob, how long have you been in this field? <laughs> um, I came to Oasis in two thousand seven. Oh, okay. So I'm not. So you're a newbie. I'm, <laughs> I'm a newbie. Um, yeah. I worked actually at the at the Office of Mental Health prior to going to OASAS, but uh, um, it I love being there. It's a great place. Okay, so you, so you're new to the field of addiction? Yeah. Oh, I see. So I was going to ask you how well, this compared new. to uh, <laughs> addiction in the uh, earlier days, but I guess uh, well, it, it's you know, I talk to a lot of people though. I mean, right now what we're dealing with is this the drugs that people are using right now are just, they're scary. Because, it, you know, and I've talked to a lot of people in the field, and Commissioner's been in it a lot longer than I have. The drugs people would use, they just weren't lethal as they are now. Oh, so the issue now is when you have all the problems like accessing insurance benefits, accessing mm -hmm. treatment, and they keep using, they're killing themselves. That's right. Because and it's not just the heroin and the opioids. Right. It's the fentanyl now, mm -hmm. which has become a huge right. problem. And, and I'm not even going to mention the name. There's a new drug Good. beyond fentanyl that's even more lethal. Mm -hmm. And then the synthetic, well, I call it synthetic that marijuana. marijuana. Right. It's not. Right. It's right. poison sprayed on that's a leaf. Right. Mm. But the drugs out there are just wrecking people. Cause, and so that's mm -hmm. why all that we've been doing is so yeah. critical. So how long have you been in the field? Oh boy, I'm gonna <laughs> <laughs> no, too around long that around thirty something years. But well, so actually, you've seen a lot. That's yeah, what I, but, I was but wondering. But actually, I started off on the mental health side when I was in New York City, um, in you know the LGU in New York City, uh, deputy there. I oversaw all three. Um, but I was primarily focused on mental health, and then I left shortly after 9-11 um, and I went to Nassau County and I was there for like eight years as commissioner and also oversaw all three, mm -hmm. you know, OPWDD and, you know, mental health and addiction. Um, and then I, I left there and joined uh, Governor Cuomo when he was elected here. So it's been a while, but, but you know, like Rob says, it's like night and day. You really can have that discussion of right. addiction, you know, before and after. It's very different. And, and you, people okay. have gotten to those stages, yeah. different routes. I, I tend to call it in-house. I say the different face of addiction. Mm -hmm. It's not the same. It's not the same. Of yeah. many the same. years ago. Um, and, and as Rob indicated, you know, the drugs are so much Pure and so highly addictive that it's scary. It's very scary. And so, you know, there are a lot of things which I'm not going to get into. It's not one reason. There's multiple reasons right. why these things right. happen. And I think that, you know, we have started to address, to address those them. things with some of the legislation that we'll get into later. And, and, that, and at this point, um, we have to cut this okay. show. And you know what? Please stay tuned because we will, are going to have Commissioner and uh, Rob Kent back with us on our second show. Thank you.